Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Thank you for allowing me for, to participate in this hearing today. I've only been in Congress uh, about a year and a half, but uh, in my whole life I've been deeply involved in uh, transportation issues, particularly uh, in my capacity on the Los Angeles City Council for 10 years. And so my dad, who was, a, who was an L.A. County supervisor uh, for 40 years uh, in L.A. County, uh, took my brother and I to the, the World's Fair in 1960, which was held in Seattle. Many of you probably weren't born then. Uh, and so there was this uh, modern uh, monorail project. Uh, that uh, ferried people around the, the World's Fair. And the investors of that project at the time uh, offered to build that monorail system as a pilot program in Los Angeles, uh, traversing the Harbor Freeway. Dad thought it was a good idea, uh, but couldn't get any of the other city fathers or county fathers to agree that this was a good investment. Nobody at that time thought we could ever get people out of their beloved cars. So that monorail now circles Disneyland's Magic Kingdom in Anaheim uh, constantly. But that's a reminder to me uh, that the biggest mistake I think we've made so far is not building uh, major transportation projects uh, that the public can use, will use, and will get them out of their cars. You know, in California, I believe, and I think the voters have proved that uh, time and again, that high-speed rail will reduce congestion, it will create jobs, and it will modernize the entire state's rail system. It will reduce congestion, uh, which is a key issue for Californians. Uh, transportation congestion is strangling the business potential of our state and weighing down the economic activity that isn't just critical to the success of California, but to the nation as a whole. Uh, if any of you have ever driven on the freeway between Los Angeles and San Diego, uh, it could take anywhere from two to four hours uh, in traffic. On turning to aviation, there's delays there as well. Flying between Los Angeles and San Francisco, in theory, takes only an hour. But one out of every four flights between Los Angeles and San Francisco, the busiest short-haul market in the United States, are late by close to an hour or more. And that doesn't even include the time now it takes uh, with air travel and going through security. Our transportation network is already overburdened, and that's long before you start factoring in the increase in travelers in California. But in many cases, there is no physical, to ex no physical space to expand a freeway or build a new runway to take into account all of the projected growth in travelers. In many cases, the communities do not want to expand their airports. The community surrounding LAX is already mobilizing against any expansion. As the population grows, we need to construct new transportation options to reduce congestion, options that won't just continue to patch our existing system, but break open a new transportation future. I think high-speed rail is that option. Second, there's no doubt that high-speed rail is a job creator. At a minimum, the construction project will create 20,000 jobs each year for five years. This is great uh, for the state of California, which was certainly hit hard by the recession. And that 20,000 is before you factor in the jobs that this new system will ultimately generate. Third, the plan will modernize the state's rail system. They've created a blended system that will begin construction on high-speed rail while improving other rail systems throughout the state. This will allow for the high-speed rail system to connect the inner city and regional rail systems called the bookends. And there are connectivity funds for rail projects throughout California 
including Caltrans positive train control and Los Angeles Metrolink upgrade in my part of the state. This railroad will get needed upgrades and swap out diesel engines for an electrified system that's cleaner and faster. High-speed rail would not happen without federal government support, including legislation passed by Congress to authorize this program. The United States is going to maintain our position of economic leadership. We have to invest in the best infrastructure in the world. That will not be true if we do not invest in high-speed rail. We cannot wait until our highways are completely congested, our airports cannot expand anymore to start thinking of other long-distance transportation options. We need to catch up to Germany, France, and Japan. I just heard this morning that Japan is celebrating their 50th anniversary of their bullet train. We cannot allow China to surpass us in our next generation of infrastructure. Tourists from across the world will visit our high-speed rail to marvel at our civic engineering and technological prowess. This is not just about transportation, but about changing the revitalization along the cities along the route. In conclusion, it's clear that I support the high-speed rail in California. The federal program uh, will help make it possible. What we need now is vision. What we need now is leadership. What we need now is a belief uh, that the people of California and this country want us to, to invest in this type of uh, transportation option. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back my time. Thank you. I thank both of the, the members for joining us. And you're welcome now to join us if you'd like and stay for questions. So we'll excuse you at this time uh, as we bring uh, Secretary LaHood up, who's our next uh, witness. Well, 